Hello there, and welcome to the third episode of my life studying abroad in Paris. I'm having breakfast. I'm gonna have to leave probably kind of soon because um, I have my first day of classes at La Cato, which is um, where I'm having like two of my classes. I'm kind of nervous, honestly, because the classes at La Cato are going to be with French students and I'm just gonna have to function in French, you know? It turns out the first day was terrifying because the professor spoke really fast. La Deuxième République, c'est 1848, 1851 ou 1848, 1852. Also, I had to expose myself as an American that day. I had no idea what he was saying, not because I don't have the right level of French necessarily, but because nobody told me that there was an online student portal that he was referencing. So I was faced with the choice of either sitting here for two hours not understanding a word and then asking him quietly after class, or figuring it out now, but exposing my American accent to 50 other French students. Uh. Excusez-moi de vous déranger, mais je suis étudiante d'échange américain et je suis complètement perdue. Not to pat myself on the back too much, but this ended up being a pretty good decision on my part because for the rest of the semester, everyone knew already that I was the clueless American in a French history class. And honestly, the French students were all really nice to me. A bonus is I didn't feel as stupid asking very basic questions. That's not to say that everything was a walk in the park, but at least I was off to a good start. At least, academically. In other aspects of life, like for instance, how to enjoy my life in Paris, I was still trying to figure that out. Today, we're going to the Pizzapetti and, um... So basically, I was crashing a visit for a class that I was not in. I did not take art history, but honestly, this was a pretty lit class, so if you do the USC Paris program, I would recommend, for sure. This ended up being the only time I ever crashed a class visit, but honestly, I regret not doing more, because honestly, this was really fun. And you know, two of the best things that Paris has to offer are art and its museums. So here's both of them smashed into one. I was still terrified of going places alone, so this was perfect for me since I was able to just tag along with the class and everything was chillin'. Okay. To continue the theme of change that day, I went and got a haircut at the same place that Moya Mawini got her haircut. And it's honestly one of the best haircuts I've had in my life. So I would definitely recommend going to Mille Marais, especially if you're looking for an Asian style. Next, I went to the very famous Café de Flor for some hot chocolate with some new friends that I met through a mutual friend that wasn't even in Paris, but connected us nonetheless. And in case you're wondering how good the TikTok famous hot chocolate actually is, we all agreed that it's really good and it's truly worth your time. And then we wandered around some of the iconic parts of Paris and it ended up being a really fun day all in all. I'm lost to see, trying not to panic, though it's far too late for me to say. In my last video, I told you all that I got roasted by my host mom for staying in my room so much. And so I asked her where I should go and she said I should try Giverny, which is a village that is only one hour away from Paris and is the perfect day trip because it's really close to Paris and it's internationally renowned for being the home to Claude Monet's house and gardens. And so I held not only my anxious ass out there, but also my friends Kylie and Emily as well. So we started off in the village Vernon, where the train station was, and the plan was to head off to Giverny after lunch but it ended up being a little more complicated than we expected. To sum it all up, I didn't look into transportation enough and that ended up being a fatal mistake. We missed the bus and by like hours. Well, we made it, we're here now, we got a taxi. To clarify, I didn't look at the bus schedule so I never realized we missed the last bus before their lunch break and the next bus wasn't going to come for another one and a half hours, meaning we were 
gonna get to Claude Monet's house without much time before it closed. And the other thing is Monet's house is 20 minutes away from the train station by car, but one hour away by foot. And in a true smooth brain moment, I was like, oh, we can just Uber. But then rural France was like, and so eventually we figured out that there was a number we could call to get a taxi and that's how we ended up in Giverny. I was really stressed, but we're here now. I didn't capture most of this on film, but getting back to Paris was actually a whole debacle. The bus was so late that we thought it wasn't going to come. No taxis or Ubers were available and only my phone had service, but I was almost out of battery. So I thought that we were going to have to run three miles in a thunderstorm or find lodging in Giverny, but then miraculously the bus came and we barely made our train. So it was chaotic, but... And honestly, it sucked and I was really anxious and felt terrible about my poor planning skills, but it was definitely a teachable moment because never again did I forget the importance of researching and planning transportation when you travel, especially if you're visiting a small rural town type area. For a while, I wasn't ready to do any more moderate to big trips planned just by me because the first one was such a disaster, but fortunately in the meantime, I was still able to find some pretty cool plans to latch onto. And so here's me and Kat going to Le Palais de Luxembourg. And this was special because the building is closed to the public every other day. And I know it's not the same, I never get enough, get enough from your After returning from our day trip to Arcachon, everyone took a nap except for me, and this meant that I had two hours to kill on my own, so I texted my friend Joyce to help me by being an enabler, and it worked. This, I think, was a turning point for me. I think this was the first time during the entire study abroad experience that 
I went out by myself and honestly enjoyed it. I was alone, yes, but for once, not lonely. So I didn't film this, but the night before, we actually went to a bar called Sputnik and made friends with some of the local university students. And so then the next day we grabbed dinner with some of them and they showed us a different bar. I'm not usually one for nightlife, but this was actually one of the most fun nights I've had at a bar slash club situation. Tu veux être présent? C'était plutôt les lumières, mais. Oui, bien sûr. Allez, les gars! Non, stop là! Anniversaire! Anniversaire! Merci tout le monde! Bon anniversaire! The next day was a lot more chill. No, I never down climb like this. On this day, we visited saint emilion a village notable for wine, macaron, and its historical architecture, particularly that of its church. It was also just one of the most charming places I've ever been. <laughs> In Bordeaux, I felt my social life and confidence start to pick up. After returning to Paris, it seems like that trend continued. For instance, I was climbing pretty regularly with my friend Adrien, whose name I still butcher after all this time, but I digress. Funny enough, the climbing gym is probably where my conversational French improved the most. Oh. Retire ton pied droit, mais le là. Faut que tu montes ton pied. Il faut que tu montes ton pied gauche sur le petit là. Non. Mais pose ton pied droit sur le module à droite, déjà tu auras plus de stabilité. Non Non mais vas-y Voilà. Essaye avec le pied droit. Moi je fais que du jeu en regardant. Essaye avec même avec sa tête. Mettre les deux mains. Do it Oh tu l'as Non Allez tu l'as Non tu l'as pas <laughs> Slowly but surely, I started making more friends and finding new places to explore. I guess in the end, it did take time, but things were taking a turn for the better. I'm starting to think that I do things way too differently to take this seriously. And all of the times that we said we go to therapy. By this point, I was starting to finally find my groove, and I was getting used to the constant challenge. Truthfully, not every instance of venturing out of my comfort zone had a stellar payoff, but enough of the time, it still did. And that's it for this chapter of my study abroad journey. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you soon. Oh, I hate you. Can I see him?